Okay, I thought I'd start this uh, channel off by demonstrating an off-label use of a phenomenal product known as ChipQuick. This is an alloy. It's developed for uh, removing surface mount components. Um, and I have a use for it uh, on these WPC boards. Uh, this has been a real uh, lifesaver in some of the oddball uh, repairs where you deal with 20 plus year old boards and there's uh, parts just, just won't cooperate with you. One of the things on these WPC boards is you have five capacitors here. They're 15,000 microfarad, 35 volt, and they're a snap-in. Well, like I said, these boards are 20, 25 years old, and people try to remove these, and they tear out the eyelets that connect the top side of the board to the uh, bottom. This particular one is my motivation in doing this video, because this has been repaired before. You can see there's a jumper wire down there where an eyelet has been repaired with a jumper. So, I'm going to show you how I do this using chip quick. Uh, if you have a desoldering tool, great. If you have a solder sucker, even better. But there's always going to be some little bit of solder, it seems like, that gets stuck behind. And with these snap-ins, they're so tight against the outside of the eyelet, they can pull those things out no matter how hard you try to desolder, desolder them. So anyway, just a brief recap of the board itself. You have three bridge rectifiers here, 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 two under the heat sink, five of these 15,000 mic capacitors. You've got a capacitor here, another capacitor over here, and an axial here. So this bridge and this capacitor is for one of your 12 volt sources for the Fliptronic. The BR1 over here is your 18 volt, which is uh, broken down um, for your 12 volt uh, digital side as well for the optos. You have uh, filtration for that here. BR2 and this capacitor is your 5 volt. And that's the one that people generally have problems with. They get on the internet, they say, hey, my game's resetting, what do I do? They find that this capacitor and or this bridge rectifier is the cause of it. Now, generally what I do is I replace all of them. You know, yes, it sounds like a shotgun repair, but it's all the same age. It's all 20 years, it's 25 years old. Um, they're all going to wear, and I'll demonstrate that here when this uh, is towards the end. Anyway, uh, these two bridges, let's see, BR3 here and BR4. Um, BR3 is for your 50 volt source, and that's tied to this capacitor here for filter. BR4 is your 20-volt uh, source, and that is um, C11, which is this capacitor here. And then, like I say, that's for the 12-volt uh, for, for the Fliptronic over there. So this is your 12-volt regulator here for the digital, and this capacitor here is the filter for that. Now, what I've found on these, when this capacitor goes bad, now notice how it's kind of built real close into this heat sink. Well, these boards sit vertically, so that's up. And the heat can trap in these things. And these capacitors change. Well, what happens when that uh, line gets ripple in it, it gets a lot, of, uh, a lot of ripple when that cap goes bad, you get really weird switches that just go off for no reason, but they're, they're all on the optos. So if you have optos that just trigger for no reason, don't trigger when they should, trigger when they shouldn't, that's the, that's the probable cause. This particular board has been repaired in the past, like I said, and they've added a fan over this, which yeah, could, could be a good idea. You know, um, who knows? They get a little noisy over time. They were never designed to have a fan, but, you know, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with cooling. So what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to flip this board over. Normally, if you get these in, one of the first things I do is I check these edge connectors. Now, this one's already been replaced. Um, any kind of discoloration on these pins, and they're burned. When you get burn, you get resistance. When you get resistance, you get heat, which gives you more burn. It's a big catch-22. So if you have any bad edge connectors, replace them. They get, uh, like I said, burned on the GI circuits. Um, any kind of input, your input circuits over here, coming off the secondary, the transformer. 
All this stuff can cause low voltage, which can cause shutdowns, resets, all kinds of weird things. So, we will flip this board over and I will demonstrate removing the capacitors using this chip quick. Okay, so the first step here is to remove as much of the old solder as possible. Now, some people will come in and they'll heat up um, the connections and they'll rock the cap. Then they'll go to the other connection and they'll rock it back the other way. And it'll eventually, hopefully, work its way out. Unfortunately, it often brings the eyelet with it. So this procedure, we're going to use chip quick. A soldering gun and just a little hand solder sucker. If you have a desoldering station like a Hako or something like that, those things are amazing. But unfortunately, even they... Uh, can cause this because of the way these snap-in caps bind up. So we get this thing heated up as best we can. Remove as much of the solder as we can. Try to do this without my hand shaking. This little hand soldering tool isn't really doing that great. It has done better on other ones. Getting a little tired or clogged or something maybe. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get the stuff out as much as you can. Okay, now we are going to add a little bit of paste flux help the alloy bind with the remaining solder. Like I said, I've used this chip quick before on so many different things. Uh, Multi-layered circuit boards where you just, you, no matter how hard you try, you just can't get it to desolder. So just add the chip quick in there, let the flux do its job and get everything all blended together. And there's cap number one. And there's cap number two. Now you clean out the chip quick. Take the big chunks out. sucker and then generally what I do is I come back with a solder wick and just get the last of it Just remember, they are polarized, so as you can see, there's a positive, and if you get them backwards, you will regret it. Okay, I've removed all the 15,000 microfarad capacitors, and as anticipated, the uh, eyelets on C5 had been torn out and had been previously repaired, so I thought this would be a good uh, demonstration, a time to demonstrate how I repaired them. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the old repair, it worked. Uh, very simple to do, should you actually tear these out. You simply take, poke your wire through the hole, bend it over. Should have warmed up a smaller soldering iron for this, but this will work for demonstrating purposes. 
sand I had to sand back a little bit on the, the trace get a little bit of that solder mask off of there we'll do the same thing on this end Obviously the idea we do not want to fill up the hole because we still got to put the new capacitor in there. So now what we've effectively done is we have replaced the functionality of the eyelet by connecting the top and the half of the board and the bottom half together. Now we can replace the capacitors, solder them in. Um, at that point, generally, what I do is I go through and uh, re-solder all of the connectors across here, clean up any flux that was never done there. Um, and uh, then put it in the board and uh, put it in the board in the game and test it out. So I will be right back once everything else is done and we'll go from there. Okay, the capacitors have been replaced. Uh, I redid the uh, jumper from the damaged eyelet um, on C5. I went ahead and replaced all the caps in it. Like I say, this is kind of a shotgun repair, but I'm going to show you exactly uh, why we do this. I resoldered all of the um, connectors, cleaned all the flux, everything else is ready to go. So here's the caps we replaced. Two of these had been replaced before. These two had been replaced before. These were look like they were original and then they're the smaller caps. So now I'm going to show you why we replace all of them as a lot. Here's the two that one of them that uh, had been replaced. And if you can see the numbers this is 15,000 microfarad it reads 14.4 so that one's good this is the other one again these are the two that have been replaced it's reading about 14.3 well with intolerance these are the originals so the first one again these are 15,000 microfarad this one is reading just under 11, 10, 9, 10, 8. So that's lost about a, almost a third of its value. This one's reading under 10. And this one is reading 8. So as you can see, these things lose their value. That's why I always replace them as a lot. These other capacitors, this one here wasn't too bad as I recall. This is 100 microfarad. Memory serves, it ran about 80 something. Yeah, 87.5, it wasn't terrible. This is the one on the voltage for the optos. Now this is 100 microfarad. This reading 47.5, so it's lost 50% of its value. Now remember that was the one that was in the, uh, the little heat sink down there, so it couldn't, couldn't dissipate any heat. And then this is the axial, which I just dropped. Okay, trying not to drop it this time. This is the axial, it's 100 microfarad at 10 volt, and it reads error 7. 
Now on the Sencor scope, Air 7 means it's out of the range, and this thing reads easily down into the picofarads. So this thing is practically non-existent, which also tells me it's going to have a very high ESR. Yeah, 83 ohms of ESR. So that one was terrible. But this board is officially done, ready to be tested, ready to put in the game and tested, and then we'll move on to the next thing. So if you like these tips, let me know. If you don't like them, well, don't say anything. I have a fragile ego. Um, it'll probably do more uh, of these, depending upon what people want. Uh, it could be anything electronic, arcade boards, uh, antique radios. Uh, you, you name it, electronic. If it comes across the bench here, I may do a video on it. Thank you. Goodbye.